Hi everyone, it's Friday and I'm Bruce Wartz. It was more important saying that it was Friday than who I actually am because we're all craving for Fridays. Well, those of us who work, I guess. And Fridays um, take long to arrive. That's what I find. Thanks for the support, guys, the interest. Thanks for connecting. Some of you have um, very, very broadened views about what's going on and a lot and if not most and all of you um, are very intelligent. The people that are coming here know exactly what's going on and can see the truth also along with uh, me as we see many anomalies on the surface of the moon. The straight lines on the surface of the moon are, it's driving me nuts. When you zoom up and you'll see in this video, we'll get in close. When you zoom up to the surface and it starts oscillating more, of course, because we're approaching the atmosphere level, but I believe, um, yeah, disturbance. Yeah, there is a disturbance. It's uh, a breathing uh, atmosphere is what I think. How high the levels of atmosphere could be, the oxygen, I have no idea. But you know, you got to wonder if not all planets have an oxygen, right? I don't see why they would not, depending on... Um, on where they are. I don't think it's just the factor of having to be in that perfect area by the sun. I think there's a lot of humidity that has to do with a lot of what's growing in the universe. Water, guys. We water our plants, right? Well, the same thing goes for any other plant in the universe. It's going to need some type of um, substance, right? To, to keep it living, right? It has a food. If it's alive and it's a plant, it has to eat. So if we're seeing vegetation, which I believe is definitely vegetation on the moon, well, there has to be something um, up there, right? Maybe that's making it grow, like maybe water falling. Guys, remember the biological creature video that I made where you see uh, expanding and contracting a sort of jellyfish-like cloud, leaving us a yellow glowish hue in the sky or bright light that appears. Could these be storms? Can we be looking at weather? Okay, storms, windstorms, rain, snow, just like here on earth. You got to wonder. And the more I go back to the video of the biological UFO or, bi or biological creature, the more I'm mesmerized. I know for a fact that if it's a UFO, it really looks odd and it really looks like it's sort of alive-ish because um, UFOs, even though they can possibly change shapes and become invisible, can they actually become a liquid or gas? Like how far-fetched out with it? Hear me out, guys. This is crazy interesting. How far-fetched or how advanced would uh, a... Um, a species, alien species, B, if their crafts are turning into jello. We see it. And they are UFOs. And if they're not UFO ships that are transforming into gases, it has to be storms or uh, uh, living biological creatures. Intelligent or not, really leaves me wondering what the heck it is we are seeing. And the more I am looking at my research, the more I'm mesmerized and the more I am anxious to get back up there to see a lot more, hoping we will see the same types um, of creatures or UFOs that we were seeing in the last few vids from the footage I got from March and April. Science and the term scientist, when did it become a reality. When was it created and who thought of it and how did it come to be? Well, in 1834, because these bits of information are often hard to get. So the ones that do like me and many others try to accumulate these little bits of important information, it's really profitable for people to uh, get a broader view of the whole idea of science. We're not just looking at the moon. Let's find out what the moon is, let's find out how all this science was created. It's never ending information, it's just beautiful. But in 1834, Cambridge University historian and philosopher of science, 
we're talking of William Wuell coined the term scientist to replace such terms that were used before as uh, basically cultivators, like cultivators of science, cultivators of knowledge, instead of um, an actual science field, which is very interesting. If you guys remember that water has been found on the moon, many tell me that I'm nuts when I say it. No, it's it's out there. It's on the NASA website and everyone knows that the, the Chandrayaan, uh, which means mooncraft in ancient Sanskrit, uh, from India. They wanted to get out there, the Indian Space Research Organization. Chandrayaan-1 went around the moon 3,400 times in orbit, and they gathered data, you know, India, to be able to get out there in space. They did one hell of a good job. What they were doing is they were trying to uh, find out what mineralogy was on the surface, the minerals. They were looking at the topography, the terrain, like much like what we're trying to do to try to find and locate the structures, I believe they are doing the same. So now we have several countries locating these structures. So what's going to happen? If I'm seeing structures, they have to be seeing structures with 3,400 orbiting passes of a satellite image. You know, I was thinking today, we often think in the past that the wars, the big wars for land are over that you know Canada's Canada America's America India's India China's China Germany's Germany but um, what's gonna happen when somebody wants to um, proclaim high altitude sovereignty to the moon what if somebody wants to own the moon or be in charge of the moon and then another country will be in charge so we do have in the future Without a doubt, I was just thinking of this. It was very interesting, and it came to me in a in a flash of light. Right, there's going to be a war again for the domination of the surface of the moon. So, if aliens or a, an alien civilization or a higher being, if you want, did exist, a god, of course, well, we would see an intervention. Obviously, so. Who's going to claim the moon as being theirs? You know, are we going to have to share it all? But um, it's going to come down to when we start living on the, the moon, if ever that was a possibility. We're like at the beginning of time. Right? Like, you know what I mean? Everyone's stuck on the fact that technology has come and gone. We're like into the future, like back to the future movie itself is old. We're ahead now. No, we're not. We're not even. We're not even at the beginning of a regulated system. I don't think it's ever been implanted anywhere on any planet. Well, not here. That's for sure. But think of it all. Think of, of at what stage we're at. We're talking about a beginning again of an entire uh, way of living, a civilization, of a species trying to get along together, all of us different on a planet, now going to the moon and all this is going to start again. You know, what the heck are we here to learn from? It has to do with some of this. We have to be here to learn something. This is a lot of food for thought, I think, you know, and I like to share my thoughts sometimes when I'm showing some of the footage. As many of you say, I chatter a lot. I don't find I do. I don't think I talk enough about the truth. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you.